Hey there and welcome back to the Eastern Bloc. And today is a special day for me, at least. I hope it is. I get to spend it with a premium entry-level German sedan. Well, this is the W203 Mercedes-Benz C-Class from the 2000s. First, we had the 190E in the 1980s. Then, was the, then came the second generation, which was actually the first one to be called the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. That was in the mid-1990s. I believe it was from 1992 or 1993 onwards and this as i've uh, previously stated the w203 mercedes-benz c-class from 2000 and well you can sort of guess this would be something more special whenever a car is known by its internal designation then it tends to be something special like the bmw e30 e36 e46 e39 and so on Enthusiasts, while well, they sort of recognize what they're speaking about just by naming a few numbers and uh, um, letters. I don't get how that is, but anyway, I like premium cars and I like well-made German uh, saloons. Nevertheless, these are just ramblings and introductions. What I aim to do in today's video is answer the eternal question, the most important question that a car guy asks himself, whether this is an actual enthusiast car. Can it be an object of desire or is just is it just one of those uh, another run-of-the-mill commercial successes that well it doesn't do too much to the to the aficionado if you will so join me as I have a look at this uh, well this rather bargain basement uh, sedan from the 2000s Okay, so disclaimer time. I have called it a bargain basement because this was, well, it was a very cheap car. It cost, the owner bought it uh, last month, I believe, for about seven or eight hundred euros. And, well, in that price range, you sort of don't expect to get much. Um, but I'll get to the reliability and to the actual um, state of this car later on in the video. I'd like to talk about the design and the looks of this car for a bit. Uh, they're a bit of a mixed bag. When it was launched new, I was, well, I was fully aware of the car market by that time. I was 14 years or old or so, but I, I used to devour those uh, car magazines. I didn't yet have internet access, so everything car related was through magazines. But I sort of loved the Mercedes-Benz. Looking back at it now, um, while I do think it's a bit too feminine and they sort of overly done it with these uh, swoopy, elegant and luscious shapes. However, having said that, I do think this is a timeless design and that is due to the proportions of this car. It's a rear wheel drive car and as you can see, front wheels are uh, up against the corners of the car and the, well, the back wheels sort of they have that suspended look that uh, propulsion um, silhouette so yeah I do think it looks good and I get what Mercedes tried to do with this car uh, in my mind at least I think it's the first car that well radically changed the design language of Mercedes-Benz up until 1997 or 1998 or Mercedes-Benz uh, models looked like, well, they were blocky, they were classically designed, but they didn't offer anything in terms of spectacular looks. Then came um, the 1990s generation Mercedes-Benz E-Class with the four headlights. And, well, in quick succession, we had the, uh, the next uh, S-Class in 1999 and this C-Class in 2000. And, well, 
yeah, sure, they did a pretty bang up job revolutionizing the whole design theme and while well, um, giving it a modern look, um, albeit today I think it's a bit too, um, well, it's a bit too swoopy, too curvy, uh, but it sort of works. It's not ugly by any means, it's elegant and it does more than okay as this is just an overly complicated way of saying that this car is pleasing to the eye and it has the right uh, the right proportions the right silhouette yes it is elegant and yes i think it looks good it's not the best looking uh, premium sedan out there but it is one of the great ones and you can sort of see all, all these details like this uh, grill on top of the hood uh, while well, the pointed star which uh, in this generation at least still had that uh, it was still mounted uh, vertically on the bodywork on the bonnet and well it had that special look you know like Jaguars had that uh, at least American jag Jaguars had that uh, uh, that cat, the feline uh, jumping off the hood and sort of like the spirit of ecstasy goes in the Rolls Royce. This to a lesser extent is that sort, gives that sort of feeling of uh, luxury of uh, something special going on. But I guess that's enough about the design since uh, everybody's seen them and they're, they're, these cars are, are quite common in today's uh, automotive landscape. Let's talk a bit about the mechanics and uh, well, the, the engineering solutions uh, underneath the bodywork. So in front you have an under, independent wishbone suspension and a multi-link uh, rear setup. Uh, uh, I, I believe the 190e Mercedes-Benz, the first generation premium small sedan, was the first one to employ the multi-link setup. I don't know if that was world premiere or not, I'll have to look into it and put a, a small comment in post. But it is a great uh, suspension layout and, well, it should in theory at least offer uh, great uh, road manners. Under the bonnet you have the uh, classic 2.0-liter uh, four-cylinder inline-four gasoline engine. No turbocharging, no supercharging. Uh, this is just the plain Jane variant, the base model. It offers 129 horsepower and uh, 190 uh, newton meters of torque. Um, the engine is potent, powerful, linear. It revs freely. It's not particularly melodious, but it offers pleasing uh, vibrations and sounds, uh, although a bit, a bit understated, which is normal. This is not a sporty engine. I guess what I'm trying to uh, relay is that it's not as loud or as rattly as a diesel engine. And it's mated to a six-speed manual transmission. Old W203's uh, Mercedes-Benz C-Classes came with a six-speed manual transmission as standard, which is a great combination and a good feature to have back then in 2000. Few cars offered uh, six-speed manual transmissions back then. Um, I believe they were just getting mainstream. In terms of reliability, I believe they're pretty much foolproof, but I'll get to talking about issues of this particular car later on when I drive it. And keep in mind this is, well, this, this, this unit is on the cheap side, so it's bound to have some issues. And as you've come to expect, I'm going to show you how this engine sounds right now.
So let's talk interior space and practicality. The general uh, layout of the powertrain and power plant, uh, the longitudinally um, mounted engine with rear wheel drive setup means that interior space is not the best in its class, uh, at least compared to mid-size uh, and uh, non-premium offerings like the Ford Mondeo, Volkswagen Passat. And I know those were not the direct competitors, but they were sort of in the same general dimensions of the car. This car measures 4.54 meters long and it's about 1,355 kilograms in weight. Um, it's not heavy or large by any means um, and well Americans do call it a compact premium sedan as Europeans we like to refer it as a mid-size premium sedan um, I do like the way that these doors operate even after all this usage and heavy um, heavy miles that the car has seen uh, the doors still lock with that pleasant thump, which, well, only premium uh, offerings seem to, to get. So let's move on to the interior. I'm just going to quickly lay it out for you because there's nothing really special about the Mercedes-Benz W203 C-Class in the interior. Well, at least it's on par with what you would think a premium offer should be, but it's nothing special. Actually, some of the plastics do feel rather cheap and they feel that they have aged more than they should. So I, I suspect some inferior quality plastics in some areas. Um, also, I don't like the bulbousy, overly rounded bio design going on in, um, in, the, um, in the interior. There's a team there's a theme you know like Porsches did with the Boxster and the 996-911 in the mid 90s they had that overly rounded design in the inside I'm not a particular fan also I'm not a particular fan of faux wood which this car seems to offer in spades then again this isn't a top of the range Mercedes-Benz model so it's sort of uh, you sort of suspect that you sort of expect that um, seating positions are quite nice the seats are comfortable they offer support they they are bolstered uh, even though they're not sport seats bucket seats and whatnot so um, front uh, front uh, leg space front space is sufficient for two adults obviously uh, rear uh, interior space and legroom is sufficient uh, also for two adults but uh, three is a rather um, uh, three uh, <laughs> three people on the back seat is uh, rather too much and uh, certainly I, I, I wouldn't and I guess nobody would recommend that uh, trunk space at 455 liters uh, boot capacity or trunk capacity that well that's just right that's just in the in the mid-size segment uh, premium variants like the BMW 3 series and this uh, C-Class offer a bit less um, Passat Mondeos and mainstream offerings do uh, do get more trunk space but it's it's adequate it's uh, there's enough space there and um, it's practical enough I guess uh, there's also a full-size spare tire in the back and nothing really special about it right so let's let it idle a bit while i talk about the interior as i've said this is uh, well except for this ghastly <laughs> steering wheel um, protection cover uh, this is um, an okay place to be although i don't really like these uh, rounded out uh, pieces of trim and this uh, fake wood everywhere it's peeling off and it's uh, it has aged quite badly. I, I, I realize this is an old car and a well-worn one at that, but still, 
is not to my taste. Okay, so just easily reverse. I move the mirror here. All critics aside, I do appreciate the way this uh, this interior feels because you know you sort of sit high up, but you are also leaning back uh, in a way. It's very comfortable, very GT like at least to the unexperienced uh, uh, <laughs> car guy like myself. So first off, let's talk engine. It's got plenty of power and grunt, even though it's not a sporting unit at all. It offers 129 horsepower and 190 newton meters of torque. And uh, well, it does 0 to 60 in about 0 to 100 kilometers or 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 11 seconds which is on par with other offerings from the time. It was no slouch in that time period by any means. Uh, second is a bit hard to find because the gearbox, while well, the gearbox itself is okay, there are some things going wrong with the linkages. Right now I'm doing a bit of city driving and well, I guess that's relevant as well because I don't know, uh, you should be able to drive this car every day and I don't see it excelling in city driving but mainly that's because of this six-speed manual gearbox which I have to say I am a fan of manual gearboxes but even I sometimes see their futility I mean the clutch pedal is very hard the engage uh, point is very low so you have to literally be on your toes when you're driving this car in city mode. So in day-to-day -day traffic, bumper to bumper, it's going to be fairly difficult. Once you get on a winding road like this one, we'll have to see to open up the tap a bit, but um, I'm, I'm actually quite intrigued by it. I wonder if a Mercedes has managed to pull off comfort and excellent road manners all in one package. Road manners are exquisite and that's even more impressive considering the miles and the, the state this car is in and I'll get to that in a minute. The chassis is well sorted, the suspension is is just, it's excellent, it's but, buttery smooth but it offers a bit of feedback. Um, Steering wheel, steering feel, well, that's a low point, but I suspect there's something wrong with the steering pump, um, the servo pump. So this is obviously a hydraulic uh, servo pump. So I don't quite see how I could uh, accurately describe the steering feel, um, given that uh, this is a faulty unit uh, somewhat. So dead center, there's really no feel. Once you tug it a bit, um, yeah, there, it, it comes in line with the chassis and it offers enough feedback, although it is a bit numb. But I have found in, uh, in, um, in uh, day to day traffic, when you have to turn the wheel quite a lot, there is some fault with the pump. So I'm going to leave it at that it's not the high point of this car, not of the W203 uh, generation Mercedes-Benz C-Class in general, but to this car in particular. Um, also this, uh, well, this, uh, this uh, gearbox and this, the, the, the aforementioned gear linkages, well, they're, they're sort of all over the place. It's like taking a spoon and uh, uh, mixing some pudding or some sort of thick soup. There's no feel to them. Sometimes you just don't get first, then you don't get second. Once you hit third or fourth, it's okay, but still it's wobbly and it goes all over the place. The gears themselves are nicely uh, placed along the rev range and the power bands. So 
Yeah, it makes sense to have a six-speed unit. It doesn't offer a mind-blowing performance, but then again, you don't buy a two-liter inline four naturally aspirated petrol engine on a luxury car to get high performance. Um, would I consider this car to be an enthusiast car? Yes, but not this particular model. There's all sorts of things going wrong with it. And they're not, they're not off-putting and I don't mean to make fun of this particular car. It was a cheap one at, um, at 700 euros. I mean, come on, what are you gonna expect really? Uh, it's a miracle, at this price range, it's a miracle that it moves around. But there are some faults. Actually, there are quite a lot. There's the steering, um, there's the steering pump, there's the gear linkages, um, the interior, the interior is all worn out and it's all over the place. Uh, so buttons and things are just falling off and jumping out of uh, their slots. Uh, there's an ABS fault, uh, there's an ESP fault, uh, the odometer doesn't work, neither does the speedometer, um, the handbrake doesn't hold, so there's a lot of issues with it. But uh, the worst of all is that, well, even if you sort these out, this car will still not be uh, a showstopper. It will not be something that you would covet or desire or, you know, it will not invoke your passions because you will spend all your time and money bringing it to a, an acceptable level of um, mechanical estate, mechanical well-being, but you will not get a, a proper well-sorted car. So yeah, in, uh, in that sense, it is a bit of a letdown, but, well, uh, I would consider spending two or three times that amount of money buying a well-sorted Mercedes-Benz W203 C-Class. I don't like luxury per se, so in that regard, I would, uh, consider myself at risk of being a poser if I buy a premium car like this, uh, especially a cheap old one at that, which doesn't offer the full uh, list of amenities and uh, accoutrements that current luxury cars offer. Uh, but still, I think it's worth looking, it's worth giving it a, a, a chance. Um, would it be expensive to run? I don't know. This brings me to my next point. Fuel economy. This 2-liter engine officially covers uh, 100 kilometers in city driving with 14 liters of fuel, which is quite a lot, actually. It should, according to official data, uh, use about 9.7 liters of fuel in mixed driving. Is it expensive to fix? I think so, yes. Um, I'm not going uh, to assume anything about it because I don't have any experience owning a car like this. Maybe some of you in the comment section below can let me know. I suspect this is a fairly uh, reliable car, but it's not cheap to fix. So it doesn't have any catastrophic faults related to it. Uh, other than, uh, well, typical rust, which is a bit of a put down again, it's a bit of a letdown, but then again, what are you gonna do? It's a cheap old car, so uh, you get a clean example, it will not rust. You get a bad one, which starts to rust, you'll never see the end of it. I don't know what the explanation is, I don't know if there, there's a particular fault with some uh, generations of this model, but I don't know if the facelift version solved it, uh, the rust issue or so, or so on, but 
Rust is something you should be aware of in this model year, in this model car. But in my humble opinion, I think there's still a voice, there's still a song to be sang about these, uh, well, these cars, these uh, naturally aspirated rear wheel drive sedans. It's a shame to let them go to waste because this is the last opportunity that we'll get to driving um, old school uh, engineered cars. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if it will be electric. I have my doubts. But I do know one thing, a naturally aspirated uh, engine technology has, um, or combustion engine naturally aspirated, or even turbocharged uh, combustion engine technology has reached its, um, well, I guess its summit. I don't see how we can go uh, beyond this point. So something will come up. Will it be fully electric with battery? Will it be some sort of different hybrid, more uh, efficient and uh, cheaper altogether than current offering? Who knows? Uh, current offerings? Who knows? I mean, I can't really see a, a clear path to this uh, automotive um, development. But we should give these cars a chance. I would like actually a well-sorted W203 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. I would consider it. Uh, I would consider it to be worth three to four thousand euros. I'd say that would be a fair amount amount of money to uh, spend on a. Well, not an enthusiast car, but a bit more special, a bit, uh, a bit um, subtle, but a bit more than your run-of-the-mill typical hatchback or mid-size non-premium sedan. I don't really have any other conclusions or any other bullet points that I can relate to you. Uh, this was just uh, one of those nostalgic reviews. It was made more for my pleasure and hopefully for your entertainment as well. So I guess that I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.